The 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, 1st SFOD-D, commonly known as Delta Force, goes by several names, including Combat Applications Group, CAG, Army Compartmented Elements, AC, or when operating within the Joint Special Operations Command, JSOC, Task Force Green. It is a specialized unit within the United States Army, operating under the command of JSOC. The primary focus of Delta Force's missions includes counterterrorism, hostage rescue, direct action, and special reconnaissance, often targeting high-value individuals. Delta Force, in conjunction with its counterparts in the Navy, DEVGRU, and Air Force, the 24th Special Tactics Squadron, constitutes the U.S. military's Tier 1 Special Mission Units. These units are entrusted with executing the most intricate, covert, and perilous missions as directed by the President of the United States and the Secretary of Defense. The majority of Delta Force operators are chosen from the elite 75th Ranger Regiment and Special Forces within the Army Special Operations Command. However, selection is also open to members of other Special Operations units and conventional forces from both the Army and, on occasion, other branches of the military. Delta Force was established in 1977 in response to a series of high-profile terrorist incidents that prompted the U.S. government to create a dedicated counter-terrorism unit. The idea of such a unit had been discussed among military and government officials as early as the 1960s. Charlie Beckwith, a Special Forces officer and Vietnam War veteran, had first-hand experience with the British Army's 22nd Special Air Service Regiment during the Malayan Emergency. He recognized the U.S. Army's vulnerability due to the absence of a similar specialized unit. While the special forces of that era focused on unconventional warfare and support for indigenous resistance fighters, Beckwith saw the need for a more proactive and versatile force capable of direct action and counter-terrorism missions. He shared his vision with military and government leaders, but initial resistance existed to create a new unit outside of special forces or to change existing methods. It wasn't until the mid-1970s, as the terrorist threat grew, that Pentagon and Army senior leaders appointed Beckwith to establish this unit. Beckwith estimated it would take 24 months to make the unit fully operational. To justify this timeline, Beckwith and his team developed the Robert Redford paper, outlining the unit's requirements and historical precedents for a four-phase selection and assessment process. Delta Force was officially founded on November 19, 1977, by Beckwith and Colonel Thomas Henry. In the interim, Colonel Bob Blackgloves Mountel of the 5th Special Forces Group created a unit called Blue Light to bridge the gap until Delta was ready. The initial members of Delta Force were carefully selected through a rigorous process that tested their endurance, stamina, determination, and mental fortitude. Delta Force achieved full mission capability in the fall of 1979, just before the Iran hostage crisis unfolded. In response to the crisis, Delta Force was tasked with planning and executing Operation Eagle Claw, an operation aimed at rescuing the American hostages held in Tehran. However, the mission was aborted due to a series of challenges, including helicopter failures and adverse weather conditions. Following the failed operation, the U.S. government recognized the need for further changes. The 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, Airborne, also known as the Night Stalkers, was established to provide air support for special operations. The Navy's SEAL Team 6, now known as the Naval Special Warfare Development Group, was formed for maritime counterterrorism missions. Additionally, the Joint Special Operations Command, JSOC, was created to oversee and coordinate the efforts of various counterterrorism units within the military. The 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, Delta Force, operates within the organizational structure of the U.S. Army Special Operations Command, USAISOC, but falls under the operational control of the Joint Special Operations Command, JSOC. The unit is led by a colonel. Due to its highly classified nature, specific details about the unit's missions and operations are not publicly available. 
Delta Force is headquartered at Fort Liberty, North Carolina. Delta Force's organizational structure draws inspiration from the British 22 SAS Regiment. As of 2001, the unit had nearly 1,000 personnel, with approximately 250 to 300 trained for direct action and hostage rescue operations. The remaining members consist of highly skilled combat support and service support personnel. The structure of Delta Force, as described by Army Times staff writer Sean Naylor in his book, Relentless Strike, The Secret History of Joint Special Operations Command, includes several operational squadrons, a squadron, assault, B squadron, assault, C squadron, assault, D squadron, assault, E squadron, aviation, G squadron, advanced force operations, formerly known as operational support troop, signal squadron, combat support squadron, Computer Network Operations Squadron, CNOS, Tactical Evaluation and Operational Research Squadron, TR, Selection and Training Squadron. A, B, C, and D squadrons are known as Saber Squadrons and primarily focus on assault missions. C Squadron was activated in 1990, and D Squadron was activated in 2006. The Combat Support Squadron was established in 2005. E Squadron, responsible for aviation, was activated in 1989 and is stationed separately at Fort Eustis, Virginia, where it is referred to as the Aviation Technology Office. A predecessor of the unit was known as Sea Spray. Each squadron is subdivided into three troops, two assault troops dedicated to direct action and a reconnaissance and surveillance troop. A Lieutenant Colonel, O5, typically commands each squadron, while Majors, O4, lead the troops. Each troop consists of four teams, each headed by a team leader, often a Master Sergeant, E8, or Sergeant First Class, E7, and an assistant team leader with a similar rank. Team sizes can vary, with some teams comprising as many as 12 operators and others having just one or two. The selection process occurs twice annually, taking place from March to April and from September to October at Camp Dawson in West Virginia, spanning a duration of four weeks. A comprehensive account of the selection course, along with its origins, can be found in Eric Haney's book, Inside Delta Force. Haney meticulously detailed how the course commenced with standard physical tests encompassing push-ups, sit-ups, a 2-mile, 3.2 kilometers run, an inverted crawl, and a 110-yard, 330 feet, 100 m, fully clothed swim. Subsequently, candidates were subjected to a series of land navigation challenges, one of which mandated an 18-mile, 29 kilometers nighttime journey while bearing a 40-pound, 18 kilograms rucksack. As the challenges progressed, the distances to be covered and the rucksack weights increased, all while time allowances decreased. The ultimate trial was a grueling 40-mile, 64 kilometers march across rugged terrain with a 45-pound, 20 kilograms rucksack. Its completion within an unspecified time frame colloquially referred to as the long walk. Notably, only the senior officer and NCO responsible for the selection process were privy to the established time limits, while all assessment and selection parameters were defined by Delta Training Cadre. The mental evaluation phase of the testing procedure began with a battery of psychological assessments. Each candidate was then summoned to confront a panel consisting of Delta instructors, unit psychologists, and the Delta commander. The candidate faced a relentless barrage of inquiries, and every response and mannerism was dissected to mentally challenge the candidate thoroughly. Subsequently, the commander approached the candidate and delivered the news of their selection status. Those who successfully navigated the screening process embarked on an arduous six-month operator training course, OTC. This intensive training regimen encompassed counterterrorism, counterintelligence techniques, and extensive firearms and weaponry training. Participants had minimal contact with friends and family during this period. In an interview, former Delta operator Paul Howe noted the notable attrition rate within the Delta selection course. He recounted that, out of two classes consisting of 120 applicants each, only 12 to 14 ultimately completed the selection process. 
the Central Intelligence Agency's Clandestine Special Activities Center, SAC, and more specifically its Special Operations Group, SOG, frequently collaborates with and recruits former Delta Force operators. According to Eric Haney, the Operator Training Course, OTC for Delta Force, typically spans approximately six months, and it covers a wide range of essential skills for special operations. These skills include marksmanship. Trainees undergo rigorous marksmanship training. They initially practice shooting without aiming at stationary targets at close range until they achieve almost perfect accuracy. They then progress to engaging moving targets. Close quarters combat. Trainees move on to clearing rooms of enemy targets in a shoot house. They start with one target, then progress to handling two, three, and eventually four targets. As proficiency increases, hostages are introduced into the training scenarios to add complexity and test their precision and decision-making. Demolitions and breaching. Trainees are taught various lockpicking techniques, including locks on cars and safes. They also receive training in advanced demolition and bomb making using readily available materials. This training involves guidance from experts in the field, including agencies like the FBI and FAA. Combined skills. Delta operators learn to integrate their demolition and marksmanship skills in scenarios involving hostage rescue and counterterrorism operations. They practice these scenarios in a variety of settings, such as buildings and aircraft. Sniper training. All trainees are trained in setting up sniper positions around a building containing hostages. They also learn to establish a Tactical Operations Center, TOC, and communicate effectively. While Delta has specialized sniper troops, all members go through this training. Live Fire Exercises Trainees participate in live fire exercises, where hostages are replaced with other students and Delta Force members. These exercises involve the use of live ammunition to test the trainees' skills and build trust among team members. Tradecraft Trainees learn espionage-related skills, including dead drops, brief encounters, pickups, signal systems, such as danger and safe signals, surveillance, and counter-surveillance. This portion of training may involve guidance from CIA personnel. Executive Protection Trainees undergo an advanced driving course to learn how to use vehicles defensively and offensively. They also acquire techniques for VIP and diplomatic protection, drawing from the expertise of organizations like the U.S. State Department's Diplomatic Security Service and the United States Secret Service. Culmination Exercise The final test of the OTC requires trainees to apply all the skills they have learned throughout the course and adapt dynamically to complex scenarios, simulating real-world missions. International Collaboration Delta Force participates in joint training exercises with foreign special operations units to improve tactics and foster international relationships. This collaboration includes units such as the Australian Special Air Service Regiment, the British Special Air Service, and Canada's Joint Task Force II. Overall, the Operator Training Course equips Delta Force operators with a diverse set of skills necessary for carrying out high-risk, special operations missions effectively and efficiently.